Welcome back to the Daily Bread Bible Study. We are looking at day 137 for 2 Chronicles chapters 35 and 36. So this is the end of the book of 2 Chronicles and wrapping up our narrative arc here. So as such, we see life comes quickly. Today kind of focuses on that because we see the celebration of the Passover which the Passover was freedom from slavery in Egypt. And then we see the fall of Jerusalem, uh, which is a return to slavery via Babylon. So King Josiah restored the worship of God in accordance with the book of the law. One important remembrance is the observance of the Passover. The king does it literally, quote, by the book, calling together uh, people on the 14th day of the first month. The ark stayed in the temple of Solomon, and for the Passover, the king donated 30,000 lambs and 3,000 bulls. That's a lot. His leaders also give voluntarily to the Levites, and the sentiment is that everyone wants this Passover to happen, to celebrate the connection with God. Now, with all the temple assistance in their places, the Passover is commemorated. In 2 Chronicles 35, verse 18, No Passover like it had been kept in Israel since the days of the prophet Samuel. None of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover as was kept by Josiah, by the priest, and by the Levites, by all Judah and Israel who were present, and by all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So with this celebration observed, we then enter into a story of the king of Egypt traveling through Judah to make war. Doubting that God has ordained Egypt to fight a different nation, King Josiah battles Egypt to his death. In the battle, King Josiah is injured and later dies from an arrow wound. It also mentions that the prophet Jeremiah records a lament for King Josiah. This implicates the Book of Lamentations, though the focus is less on King Josiah and uh, the mourning for Jerusalem and Judah in general. Now, moving on to chapter uh, 36 of 2 Chronicles. So, with celebration turned into lamentation, King Jehoahaz takes the throne for only three months. He did, he did as his father and fights uh, Pharaoh, um, and with while well, Judah fights Pharaoh. Uh, Jerusalem falls here, and the king of Egypt enslaves Jehoahaz, making his brother Eliakim the puppet monarch in Jerusalem. The author states that Pharaoh renames Jehoiakim uh, Eliakim Jehoiakim. So having that name change to Jehoiakim, King Jehoiakim rules wickedly, sinning against God for 11 years before a man named King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon repels Pharaoh. Jehoiakim is taken by Babylon, while Jehoahaz is still in Egypt. Babylon now rules over the region of Judah, even taking sacred objects from the temple of the Lord to Babylon. Second Kings then lists this of the Babylonian exile, that the vessels of the house of the Lord were taken, the treasuries of the king's house were gone, the skilled workers, warriors, and government officials are taken, and the king and his family are all exiled. The poor are said to remain in Jerusalem, and the newly appointed king Jehoiachin rules for three months and ten days before he is taken to Babylon too. A man named Zedekiah is then made the vassal king appointed by Nebuchadnezzar. King Zedekiah lasts for 11 years, and just like those after King Josiah, he does what is evil in the sight of the Lord. He was the centerpiece of dysfunction in 2 Chronicles 36 verse 14, leading all the priests and the people who were exceedingly unfaithful following all the abominations of the nations, and they polluted the house of the Lord that he had consecrated in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent persistently to them his messengers, 
because he had compassion on his people and on the dwelling place. But they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising his words and scoffing at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord against his people became so great that there was no remedy. So the Lord then sends Babylon to completely destroy Jerusalem. And after the destruction, the writer claims that all the forgotten Sabbath days are then observed as it is desolate. All the days that it lays desolate, desolate are kept as Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. And that's what it says in 2 Chronicles 36, verse 21. Yet 2 Chronicles ends on a hopeful note. King Cyrus of Persia comes and reverses what Babylon did and rebuilds worship of God. For this, Isaiah 45 calls King Cyrus an agent of God, specifically a Messiah, an anointed. God delivers salvation through the King Cyrus. So in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 36, verse 23, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. So in closing, as we look at you know, 1 Samuel through the First Chronicles arc, we see that reverence for God is the indicator of success. Worshiping anything other than God is labeled as, quote, doing evil, and God uses imperfect people from any nation to do his bidding, and the actions of leaders often bring consequences upon the nations that they rule. God's blessings can return for those who repent, and the relationship with God is an ongoing one, where God seeks to keep his promises for those who listen to his voice. May we hear what God has to say and act in faith towards this God we, who chooses to be with us. So we will pick up the Daily Bread Bible study next time as we are looking in Ezra chapter 1.